are way, way up on the mountain. We're up now around uh, 2,000 foot elevation. Yeah. And a lot of people come through here and think, well, we're in we're in the deep woods and everything. And uh, here's here's a very good example of that the conditions were different here 150 years ago. Or a tree wouldn't have grown like that. That's more like a maple you see on a lawn well, low, in a village. Low spreading branches, yep. And, and that means that there wasn't a tree growing right over on this side. There was one growing here. There was one growing on that side. Um, there was, well, that tree was growing on this side. But you can add sunlight. You can add sunlight reach. on the branches and they live. You could go sideways to get it. It didn't have to go up. Yep, yep. And in the back here, there's uh, mushrooms growing out of this tree. So it's got some problems. Yep. Yet, unlike the white birch, uh, that that tree would be here another 30, 40 years. Right. Not that it has any commercial yeah, value. Maybe on another 100 years. So. Yeah. 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 Made to, it has the genes to live a long time when the white birch doesn't. It's quite obvious here uh, along the road where the stone wall was. When I say where it was, some of it's still here, but not a lot of it. And I'm sure a lot of those stones over the years ended up in someone's fireplace or stone walls down in the valley. And it's a lot better building stone usually at the higher elevation because it hasn't had the uh, erosion being tumbled by the water and they're flatter and square. And but the stone wall went right through here. There's a lot of forest dust that covered things, but uh, there's a, a lot of a lot of stone there. And if somebody doesn't look carefully, they they may just fix a few isolated stone and walk on and follow that right along. Parallels the road here probably for a few miles. Where it spread out is where people probably took the, the better stone and pushed the others off to the side. And I see a, a taller pile of stone right over there. That must be a foundation. And probably 150 years ago, mid 1800s or so, uh, Probably was a complete house with a, a family in it. Assuming this pile of stone here is the fireplace, I'd estimate this whole thing to be maybe somewhere around uh, 20 by 30. Probably not any bigger than that. And that was probably a little bit bigger than a normal house at that time. Right close to the road. The uh, traffic wasn't very heavy or very often. Probably glad to see the traffic. I'd like to have somebody go by to talk to, bring you the news, maybe the mail. And with the uh, everything being virtually clear back at that time, uh, some of the most panoramic views with the leaves off now, you can see some of it, but it was uh, not uh, obstructed at all, probably, back then. Looking generally westerly, and uh, that's kind of the south slope of what's known as Bear Mountain. And that uh, is between the Bear Town area of Sandgate and uh, Rupert Road. And that's, that's a pretty good uh, height to that. That goes up uh, around uh, 2,500 foot elevation. And it goes along, goes downhill slightly, which is the back side of what they call the oven over in Rupert. It continues on around through Rupert. And then we'll start on some of uh, Dorset, a, a slope. Dorset going up uh, toward Mother Merrick. 
the top of Mother Merrick, the highest point on the, the Manchester Dorset line. The point that we see here now is, is really a lower ridge heading back down toward the uh, Beartown Notch, where the road from Beartown to Manchester went. Then in, in the Beartown Notch, years ago there used to be the old carriage road that went to the top of Mount Equinox. And that was the access before the modern road was built. And it followed the ridge line through short uh, spruce, white birch, all, all the way around through a, a slight sag and then up into what's the clouds today, up where the, the hotel is today. And right where we're standing, probably for a good uh, half mile radius to our south, east, and north was all open land. And to the west, that open land probably went for two to three miles. And today virtually all of it's back in a wooded wooded condition. Oh, it's a beautiful day in November. Less than a week to Turkey Day. Doing the uh, December program for Vermont Forest. Jim Jim's not here. Uh, we kinda got a problem. Jim's going to look at the new wood-burning furnace at Mount Anthony Middle School. Did I say that right? I think. I'm not from Bennington. And there's a problem because we can't be two places at one time with one camera. And there's a camera camera here. Oh, there, right, right there is the camera we're using today. And Jim's at the school and I've got a doctor's appointment. And I'm I think I'm where the direction said it had to go. It doesn't look like most doctor's offices uh, or the location. Most of them are somewhere near the hospital. And I have no idea, but I guess, uh, I guess I've got to go and, and see. I'm all by myself. Bruin was going to come along, give me support in the doctor's office, but at the last minute he said it's time to go Christmas shopping going to go early this year so I'm on my own and here I go oh uh, hope this is the right place oh, oh, oh there's that one hi there hi. Um, is the doctor in the doctor well uh, no but they call me doc <laughs> well I I was I, told I, that I, I had a doctor's you, I, I knew what, you've got asthma or something like that. Well, I don't know what's wrong with me. People have been trying to figure me out for years, and nobody's decided what the problem is. But uh, anyway, I, I thought maybe you you could help me. But your your Dr. Gaines? Well, Doc Gaines is Doc my, Gaines. Ni my nickname. Uh, Do you have a stethoscope? Uh, I've got one, but I don't use it much. Oh. Uh, Maybe right, you, right now, you do help, sur surgery. Uh, more, uh, surgery, yeah. I've, I've got, uh, well, actually, I've got one of my dad's Ooh, scalpels I, here. <laughs> I, 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 don't, I don't think I need that. <laughs> no, well, I've been, from a long time ago, I've, I've been a cut-up anyway. Oh. Well, how, how did you get the name Doc, if you're well, not a doctor? Well, when I was off at a boarding school, I... Uh, lived in one of the dormitories and my father being a doctor he gave me oh uh, some aspirin and other little things like that and band-aids and uh, maybe yeah, yeah I can see you can make good use of the band-aids <laughs> right. so uh, after a while the, the the infirmary was almost a mile off the main campus and Pretty soon, some of my classmates had come along. Hey, uh, what can you do for me here? <laughs> and so I, maybe I, if they had a cut, I 
flip out a Band-Aid and maybe a little Mercurochrome or something like that. <laughs> and uh, so pretty soon that got to be my nickname and uh, I just uh, kind of stuck with it. In fact, when my wife and I were married, we'd been, I'd been working here on her dad's farm for quite a few years and we invited our next door neighbors to the wedding and they, who's this Osborne? <laughs> I know, they didn't, they hadn't even known my name. They knew me as Doc all around the neighborhood. <laughs> well, speaking of the neighborhood here, I know it took a lot of twists and turns and was going this way and then that way and then this way, and we finally got here. Yeah. Where, where are we? <laughs> well, you're, you're right on the New York-Vermont border. Our farm straddles the border. My wife's folks came here back in the, oh, about early 1900s. Well, it was about 1910 or something like that. They came in and they were looking for a place near where her, where his folks were. And they settled on this. This was a, just, just ideal for them. And so, we depend on which way you drive. We're to, in fact, sometimes we call ourselves Newmonters. Okay. Because uh -huh. <laughs> uh, we actually, our, our, our residents, you're actually standing in New York at the moment. Uh, go down 100 feet or less, and you're in Vermont. <laughs> so are you a Vermont resident? Uh, I'm Technically, I'm not a Vermont resident. <laughs> I've got a vote in New York, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, I th I would, I've been thinking of moving the house down just a little bit more so I can officially be a Vermonter, but <laughs> then with all this stuff about seceding to New Hampshire, I don't know what they're going to do. <laughs> Well, you've got quite a collection of, of items oh, here. I that, sure that's do. For sure. Uh, well, and how did how did you get get started? To, the pit people wouldn't hold still uh, uh, <laughs> for the carving, so you had to go to wood. Well, something like that. Uh, ever since I was a kid, uh, in grade school, uh, the art class they gave us a cake of, cake of soap and a dull knife, and here you make make something. And that got me started in thinking in three dimensions. And I was going at it real, real well. And in fact, I, I would also make these uh, airplane models. They out of uh, strips of balsa wood and uh, uh, tissue paper. And I was I've forgotten what it was, but I had some sort of a childhood disease that I had to stay in bed for. And I was, so and my mother was taking care of me. And here I was, I had this model airplane almost finished. And I don't know if I coughed or sneezed and crunch. And she, my mother said, here, you've got plenty of time on your hands. You've got lots of glue and you've got some other pieces. You just go at it. And she taught me patience by doing this. And so I, I've been back and forth, whatever. <laughs> so it's all, all craziness. And then I, thinking in three dimensions, I, I also, well, I might take a look at you and Maybe I can carve your your face or something, and, and this isn't the, the face, but <laughs> I would sketch out something, and then I would do it, and, and I take it on to a, uh, I cheat a little bit, I use a little power bandsaw, <laughs> and I'll rough out the, mm -hmm. the piece in a front view and a side view, maybe a top view, and cut off what I can with the bandsaw. And then it's back to 
Sometimes I have a real big saw. <laughs> this is uh, just for getting into little fine things like this. And when I'm carving out, for instance, my uh, symbol of I love you, the American Sign Language, I can get into little places with this saw and then I'll use some of my other tools. Uh, sometimes I need a real big chisel <laughs> to get into and I have made a lot of my own tools. This is actually the, just the tang of a, a file and here is what used to be a chainsaw file. I needed a left skew and a right skew, and so I made them both. And then, I f hey, I'm just a little, it's not that I'm a Scot or anything like that, but I do have to get in here and sometimes just do a little slim filing. Mm -hmm. And I cheat a little bit. I've gotten some X-Acto tools and with their various blades so that I can come in and carve and get out just a little bit at a time and well, where was that little puppy dog I was working on oh, Down there. oh Down there. he he went hiding <laughs> <laughs> and so I can get in here and cut in and this is a little bit too much so I'll, I'll just cut a little bit off this and now his ear is a little bit long on that side, so I'll cut a little more here. And then I can round off little bits. And then he's got one leg stretched out this way, and the other one stretched out but kind of held in. So here he is. I've got to figure out where, where his uh, ears are. Well, uh, maybe I'll come in here, but I've got to be careful with the grain of the wood, too. I, I was going to ask you about that because um, it's not just to pick up a piece of wood and just start cutting on it. You no, have to analyze. You've got to analyze it. you got to. And then I make some of my small parts. I, oh, hey, what's all this? Well, I need something about that size round to fit into a round hole. So, okay, I've drilled out the size that I need, and I'll work it until, I, oh, okay, chop down. Maybe it's a, a little piece that I want to for right in here. So I've got to cut down a little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit. And does it fit? Mm, well, almost. Maybe I've cut too much off. Well, that's fine. That'll give me a, a little bit of a shoulder so that I can come back here and then I'll make this and there I go. I can either have a small tail. And yes, it does fit. Whoops, I broke it off. What am I going to do? So, maybe I can dig it out, but then I can use one of my big drills and get, <laughs> that's how I'll get the start on something else. And I have two different size Some drills. in the handle. And I can turn that around and use the bigger one. Oh, depending on which I'm doing, but Sometimes the little one's just what I need to get started. Well, we, we've spoken before on the Vermont Forest Program about the uh, uh, properties of wood. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, re I remember uh, taking a college course on wood identification, and we were given uh, pieces of wood no, no bigger than that oh. to identify. Oh, yes. And we could do it by, by cutting, by breaking it, by tasting it, by getting it wet, uh, mm -hmm. many different things oh, yes. show the different characteristics. But wood is, is an unusual 
uh, has unusual properties in that it is about the only item that is it's stronger in tension than in compression. Yes. And uh, to take and try to pull a piece of wood apart is <laughs> oh, the next that, thing to uh, impossible. That. It is uh, an, an amazing uh, part of nature. Right. <laughs> well, I try to use everything that I can. That, uh, I've, I even have made a holster so that I can put that in my pocket and then I bring an old diaper usually because I can't, I won't be carrying this with me uh, when I'm going wait for the doctor that, uh, <laughs> that I'm supposed to see. You know, I can take that out, put the diaper in my lap and hopefully do my carving and whatnot. Take, well, I'll probably take something like this or whatever is in demand at the time. Well, of the, of the tools that you use here, and, uh, and a lot of them which you've made, which all wood carvers seem to do, you probably have a, a couple almost like favorites that get used more than others. Well, I, I probably do. Now, I have, I've sometimes made, sometimes buy, again. Here I've used a hacksaw blade to make a particular shape that I needed. And it wasn't quite the right size, so I made another one. And then I've got a little extra saw if I need it. <laughs> so I'm, but these are the ones that I use most of the times. A chisel, uh, and I, of course, have to have a sharpening stone or whatever. And I, I keep this to get my, an edge on my round shapes. And then I've even gotten, this is actually a little bit of a diamond uh, surface where I can just get that truly flat and take the little burr off and, oh, okay, that's sharp enough. I could cut myself real easy. <laughs> and once in a while I do, but most of my cuts are done by somebody else. <laughs> I've had both of these joints replaced. And that's one of the reasons I actually got into, after I got those joints, the doctor said, well, when you get out, don't do anything. Maybe pet the dog a little bit. And, and when you get used to doing something, then go to therapy. And I looked at the thing of, what do we do with therapy? And I said, therapy, schmerapy. <laughs> I'm going to do my own. I, so I picked up and I started doing a little bit and I'm keeping the, myself entertained as well as out of mischief if I had this. <laughs> now you, you've got all these different uh, uh, materials. I'm, I'm assuming that there's quite an assortment of different woods and oh, there's laminates and whatever. And, and uh, how, what kinds do you use and how do you decide it? Well, fellow says, what wood do you use? And I said, yes, <laughs> I use anything. One of the things that I decide is, can I cut it on my farm? Mm -hmm. And uh, I have actually, I, I went out and I, I bought a portable sawmill. And I trimmed the, some of these trees that I just am going to trim up and some that are, that's time to harvest them, and then I dry those off and uh, go at it. And I have all sorts of things. I use maple, cherry, butternut, basswood. Basswood's my favorite carving wood. It's a Easier soft hardwood. Mm -hmm. And yet it's stronger than, a, than some of these others in some ways. As you say, you can't pull it apart. But as you saw over here, I can break it. <laughs> and uh, and so, do, you, do you glue up some pieces and laminate I it? do that. Uh, in fact, you may see a little, it looks like a medicine bottle, which it was. But I put a drop of glue where I'm 
going to put some things together. And if you let me get up, I can show you some of the things that I have glued together. And that, is that glue, is that uh, clear when it dries? This dries reasonably clear. And there are some glues that actually are really transparent. They're, they're special, but I I use these that will, I want something that's going to not take forever to harden. And some of them uh, you will, uh, you want an op what they call an open time so that you can adjust things. And so this one is, well, I, I think this is Type Bond 2, which is a, has a semi-open time and yet will, in a half an hour, I can take the clamps off. Uh, I can't really use it hard, but I could maybe do a little bit of something and then and just let it finish curing in a half a day or something like that. And you purchase your glues or do you make some? Uh, I've, I've been known to make some, but I, I generally purchase. It's a lot simpler to go out and buy a gallon of. <laughs> and then do you find some that you mix some at times? Uh, yes, I will. A certain property. I, I will mix them. Uh, I've been known to mix it up with all sorts of things. <laughs> And if I'll get out of my my workbench, and I think I'll hand that like to that. you. You can set it over on that chair, or now oh. here are some of the things you asked if I glue things together. Here are two different woods because I want the color I have and then I I needed I don't have any blue wood so I had to cheat a little bit <laughs> but this is all this is glued together and I have a backing piece so that there and then I've drilled a little special hole so that I can mount it like those up on the wall. Mm -hmm. And here they are. And each one of these can come off because it has that special hole in the in the back. And uh, that stays in place. Now this fella is, uh, I suppose I gotta be careful of him that he isn't a fly by night. <laughs> fly by night. <laughs> and here he is, and just like the coins that we have, in God we trust. And here we go up through this and then all of my work, I have my special signature. Okay. And on the back, along with the hanging hall and a couple of mounting screws, I have my signature. It's an O, a Y, and a G, my three initials. And then I write out the rest of the gains. And so there it is. OI gains, and here I have a little symbol which uh, has has it all together there. And here I am carving carvings by OI gains, North Bennington, Vermont. <laughs> and I use all sorts of things for my, uh, shall I say, my inspirations and whatnot. But I have gone out, and I, oh, the cow doesn't look just right. 
So when I go out to feed or water them, or when I did, I, I go, oh, hey, take a little nickel here. That makes all the difference in the world. Right, to have the proper proportions of something. Right, they, all the proportions. Yeah. So whether it's there. Now, my eagles that uh, would start out, this isn't the right size for, for that one, but here, it, does that look anything like an eagle? Well, it might if I did something like that. And I have several pieces, but well then, where's this other arm going to be coming from? So here we go. And I say arm, that would be a wing, wouldn't it? Let me uh, hold the other one down there. OK, lift up straight and off. And you can see the... Uh... You can see how I start in. And then I've got to, sometimes I will add a, a foot. Come on here. I'll, I'll, I make the foot out of, it's being a scot, I want the grain in certain ways, and so I'll, I'll make a piece so that I can get two out of one. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I will put that in so he can hold a plaque or a banner. And so here's... So this is, is three, three layers, yeah, one, four, two, three, and some other pieces, and, and then yeah. some other pieces. Yeah. And the three layers. And sometimes I now the original that I made. I will bring over here. This one, here he's holding the banner, in God we trust. All others cash, of course. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and this is made, this was made the same way, except I didn't have a backing piece for it. You notice it's, it's got the wood in here. This is uh, cherry and uh, I'm, not sure if that's, I think that was maple at, at one time. <laughs> and this was probably basswood. And I have the top layer. And I did not cheat and make blue. <laughs> I, I may eventually do something. But I gave this to my father. Uh, he was still in Pennsylvania. That's where I was reared originally, there and other places. <laughs> and on the back I have to dad and my start of my signature. And in 1971 is when I gave it to him. And you, do you have your your signature in a in a punch that does the whole thing, or you do it with some curved knives? I, I do it with the curved knives, but where's my little box? Here I have a big one, <laughs> and I will. Maybe I shouldn't, but I'm going to. I'll see about putting a little pressure on this. And it doesn't show very much, but there it is. Oh, my. Yeah. And I, I use that when I uh, do my leather work, too. Uh, so there it is. And this has a, a history of, of traveling. 
When my father died, my uh, stepmother said, here, you've, this belongs to you. You, you keep it. And I gave it, I came and I gave it to her dad. So it's gone through several, <laughs> several people, but, and, and I borrowed, it's been hanging up in, in the old farmhouse, which was her, her grandfather's house. And I will, I said, hey, I want, I need to borrow that so that I can copy it. And I made the smaller versions of it. And in 1971? 71 was when, the, when I have had first done it. So that's been more than yesterday. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. It hangs up. I hung it up here where it would be out of some of the dust that I make. Got to make sure that that is. There it goes. Slides on. Well, you've got quite a. I've got quite a few things. I'm going to take this out, and I'm going to set that. If you want to move, put the eagle stuff in the in that box there. That'll do. And. This is a work in progress. This will be a for a bird in the hand. A bird in the hand. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, I'm going <coughs> to... Those are some of my I love you hands. Now, this is more or less my, my been there, done that. For instance, uh, here is, I don't know if that's, that's my wife and that's me, but anyway, these are a man, a man and woman, a self-made man, self-made woman, still in the making. Okay, <laughs> self-made. Yep. And here he is chipping away at himself, <laughs> and she is doing the same thing. Well, now, I've got just, I've gone a little bit too far. See, I found myself, here I am. It was an awful long, hard climb, working my way up to the top. And from now on, it's all downhill. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so, there, and of course, Here's my wife, and she has to have her little pocketbook with her too. She always has to have that pocketbook with her. And if you see it, it's a long, hard climb to the top, only to find I'm over the hill. <laughs> so there that's, and then sometimes I find myself in the doghouse. Okay. <laughs> and I don't seem to be able to get out. But then I'll turn around and make sure that she gets into the doghouse too. <laughs> I can't be a, I don't want to be a sexist. You right. know? <laughs> and let's see. I have several of these. And of course, being a woodcutter, I have to make the wood into sizable pieces that I can use or keep warm with, because I do burn wood. So here, is, here it is. He has no, he's just a wood splitter. And I talked about some of my cows and going out and finding, oh, hey, that's, that's how that uh, hip looks. And of course, we ought to keep the cow in the fence. And 
she sometimes has company. And sometimes a little more company. Great big one. Ah, yes. Well, uh, I don't know. You want to call this kick the bucket? Or don't cry over spilt milk? Or I've got you in my sights. That could even be. <laughs> and so I have him. And then this is my wife's favorite. One who has pull has draws friends. <laughs> and here we have you never sit down to milk. Boy, by the feel of this weather and looking at all that water and everything else like that, one wouldn't think that it's Christmas time coming up here. Here it is, it's it's December. And look at this. This is it's just like like spring almost. But December being December, it's time I go and do some Christmas shopping. Yeah. My my relatives are bearing gifts all over the place, and how can I not bear gifts back to them? So I gotta go and find them something really unique. Oh, oh, look what's across the way there. I bet that would be just the ideal place to find gifts for my relatives. Boy, I gotta go over and see what's over there. Oh boy, look at all that stuff that's in there. Boy, I gotta get in there and and, and I'm sure I'm going to find all the stuff for my relatives in there. Look at all that neat stuff. Oh, boy. Well, I guess this is the way to get in here. I'm not quite too sure, but the door is open, so in I go. Oh, my. Look at all this stuff. Oh, ho, ho. boy. It even smells good in here. Look at all the stuff they have in here. I mean, they got candies. And they got stuff in jars. I bet they have honey. I know I can smell honey. And I bet they got all sorts of stuff. Oh, man. I, I, they, they, oh, what's, look at all this stuff here. Oh, boy. I, I, I know this is the place I can find stuff for all my relatives. I wonder if there's anybody around here that can show me what all they have. Oh, here comes somebody. Oh, hello. Hi, how, how are, are you? Today? Well, I'm fine. I'm Bruin the Bear. Oh, well, welcome to Arlington. Where are you from? Well, I, I'm, a, I'm a native uh, of Vermont, and I, I live right over here, over the hill, and, and guess where? Beartown, ha <laughs> And Beartown, wow. Yeah. <laughs> uh, from well, Beartown. I'm really, I'm really glad that you travel over here to see us today. Well, I'm on a mission. I, 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 it's, it's that time of the year, and I have a whole bunch of relatives that I have to buy a whole bunch of gifts for, and this looks like the ideal place. Well, I'm sure we can help you out. Did, did you have anything in mind? Uh, no, I was sort of hoping maybe you could help me out. I, I have a whole bunch of relatives, and they all like bear stuff, so... Bear stuff? Yep. Honey, well, nuts, we have, uh, fish. We have a lot of uh, teddy bears and bears in, the, um, in our back room over there. We have some uh, chocolate teddy bears. Chocolate teddy bears? Yes. Would you, you mean, like... You mean people eat chocolate teddy bears? Oh, certainly. Would you like to, would you like to try a sample? Oh. I'd much rather eat a chocolate fish, I think. I don't uh, know if I could eat a chocolate bear. Well, I don't, oh, I don't oh, have oh. any chocolate fish right now, but I do have some gummy fish. Gummy fish, yeah, those are good. Any fish is good. Gummy fish, they're they're over there on the other side. Well, every time I go somewhere, people, they have bear stew. I didn't know bear stew was something that people ate. Now bear, chocolate bears. <laughs> How about a chocolate foot? Oh, yeah, chocolate foot. Who's foot? Chocolate, this is a foot of chocolate. A yeah, foot I'm of sure that all your friends would love to have that. It is a chocolate foot, isn't it? Yes. A foot of chocolate. A foot of chocolate. That's, a, that's an awful lot of chocolate to eat. Yeah, I think we'll take a half a dozen of those. Okay, half a dozen. You, you like them? All right. And also we have, uh, I, I'm sure you remember, uh, this must be a friend of yours, the moose mallow. A uh, moose mallow, yeah. I, yeah. I have a moose friend that lives way up over on Kelly stand there. I go over and visit him sometime. Does he make oh, those? I'm sure that, uh, that well, he's, he gave me the idea on how to make them. He did? Yes, he did. What, 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 what's in them? Uh, peanut butter. Brr. You like peanut butter? Yeah, 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 I do. Yes, peanut butter and marshmallow, Brr. and it's all covered in chocolate. 
Oh, that, that sounds good. Well, yeah, we'll take a half a dozen of those, okay. too. Okay, okay. We'll get it, this down for you. Are you taking this with you, or are we going to deliver? Oh, you can deliver? Oh, certainly. We can ship it to you, or we can deliver it, or will you just give me your address, or we can send it right to your friends if you like. Oh, well, you know, maybe I'll take it, and then I'll wrap it up, and then I'll deliver it to them on, on Christmas morning. Okay, then we'll get it all ready for you. Okay. Now, you said you had some bears? Oh, yes, right, right back here. Follow me back here. Okay. Oh, boy. Bears, and look at all this candy, and look at all this. Oh, it smells so good in here. I smell honey hanging around someplace, so my honey nose is, is in over here. Why, well, look, there's a, there's a Santa Claus bear. Well, there's the teddy bear trail, and Welcome to the Baratorium. Oh, I guess this is where all the bears are in here, huh? Yeah, this is uh, right this way, Bruin. You come right this, right this way here. Wow, look at that. There's even a... Boy, oh, look at all these bears. You've got more bears here than I have in my family. Oh, we have a lot of bears here. Anybody look familiar? Yeah, they, they do. I, I think that's my cousin Waldo right there. It looks exactly like him. He, he's sort of the brains of the family, and his hair sticks out all over the place. And, and, and there's one of our bears that, well, he, he, he so we think he got mixed up with a panda somehow, because he, he, he's got those funny colors, and, well, at any rate, every family has that kind of stuff going on, I guess. Wow, what do you have there? Oh, this is, this is our, this is our really, look. Well, she took, Peek-a-boo! <laughs> peek wow! Well, I tell you, yeah, I like... Yeah, let me have one of those. I know... Okay, we have them in different colors. Oh, I, I think that tan one is, is fine. Okay. Boy, look at, look at all these bears and other animals, too. There's a couple of rabbits over there. And there's some reindeer, it looks like. Muffy, do you know Muffy? Muffy, who's Muffy? Muffy, Muffy the bear? No. You don't know Muffy? No, I haven't met Muffy. Oh, well. Oh, hi, Muffy. Meet Muffy. How you doing, Muffy? Hey, she's kind of cute. <laughs> yeah. Now, do you, where did all these bears come from? Oh, they come from all over the United States. Not um, not just from Bear Town? Not you just mean, from Bear Town. You mean bears come from other places oh, other than yes, Bear Town? Yes, there's bears all from all over. Yeah, there's bears from all over the United States. Hmm. Uh, Bear, these bears, Muffy comes from North America. The, the name of the company is North American Bear Company. Oh, well, I live in North America, don't I? Oh, I don't know. Is it, is it Vermont, North America? Uh, I don't know either. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Boy, look at that big guy sitting over there in the stool. Who's he? My goodness, is he a big bear. Yes. Wow, I like him. This is a little bear cub. Yeah. I used to be that size. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and look at me now. <laughs> oh, boy. I guess that's from eating. That's probably because you ate all that honey and nuts. Yeah, I think it is. Yes. You know, speaking of honey, I, 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 do you have honey in here? I can oh, smell it. I do have honey. Oh, well, I'll find it later. Let's, let's see. Let's see about, look at that big bear right behind you. Look out. He's going to jump on you. Oh, he's sitting by, oh, he's got a white friend there. Oh, my goodness. Look at that. Got a couple polar bears. Are those polar bears? Pooh Bear? Pooh Bear? Sure I know Pooh. Everybody knows Pooh well, Bear. here's Pooh Bear. Oh, yep, there he is. Hi, Pooh. How you doing? Long time no see. Yeah, he doesn't talk too well. No. <laughs> None of these do, but that's okay. Um, we have some uh, books from uh, Winnie the Pooh. Oh, that you might be interested yeah, in. I think maybe I'll take one of the Pooh Bears and a couple of the Pooh Bear books, because a couple of my nieces and, and and nephews, they, they like Pooh Bear. Yes, yeah. I don't understand why they don't like my adventures, but they, they seem to like Pooh better. But look at that mountain of bears behind you there. Wow. Yes, this is, this is, we call this Bear Mountain. Oh, how about that? Good thing you don't call it Bear Town, because then I might have to come and live here. Uh, then you'd have to feed me all your good candies and stuff like that. Wow. This really is a baratorium. Yeah. Boy, look at these guys. Oh, and here's here's something, some uh, some pins that you can put into, give to people, and I mean to your your friends and. Uh, 
Oh, I have a couple people, friends, I could give them to. Oh, good. Uh, I think if, if I put that on, that might hurt. My, yeah, my, 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 my skin isn't that thick. But, yeah, I have a couple of friends that would probably really like to wear the bear pins. And maybe I could start a club, and, and they'd all have to wear those bear pins to be in the bear club. Oh, How about yes. that? Yes. yes. Boy, look at that one, all dressed up with a cane and everything. Wow. Is he a magician? And there's one that does, plays ball. Oh, uh, look, Bruin, look what I just found here. Uh oh, what's that? What's that? It's what's a that? book. It's a book. It's called Bear Town Radius. Oh, give me two of those. All right, that's a good idea. Yeah, I, that's that's all about my adventures. Maybe you can help me out here. The sign says Treadle Bears of Vermont, but you know I don't know where Treadle is. Is Treadle any place close to where Fred Tuttle lives? I mean, they sound the same. No, but... no, 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 Bruin, Bruin. Listen, listen. It's not Treadle. It's not Treadle. It's treadle, as in treadle sewing machine. A sewing machine. Yes. Oh, yes. oh, okay. All these, all these teddy bears are made the old-fashioned way on a treadle sewing machine, right up, right here in Vermont. Right here in Vermont. Yeah. In treadle, Vermont, right? No, 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 no. Listen, Bruin. Listen, it's not a place. It's how they're made. Treadle bears of Vermont. They're made on this sewing machine. Oh, one seen? of the old-fashioned sewing maybe machines. Can, maybe if I took these away from here, you can see it. Better. Oh, I see. see. The thread and everything, and it's a treadle on the bottom. Oh, and okay. When, and when they sew these teddy bears, they're sewn on this machine. Oh, so, wow, that's like they did way back when, huh? That's right. Oh, so that's, that's right. where it is. That's, that's So that's treadle bears of Vermont. That's it. Now Boy. you got it. Now you got it. Oh. So it's done the old-fashioned way, which means it's got to be really good. You know, my nose, I keep, so are you sure, you got honey around here somewhere. I can smell honey. And it seems to be coming from way over there. So I, I'm going to, I, I can't resist this anymore. I got to go over and see where that honey is. Well, let's see if you can find it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, oh, I'm telling you, I can smell honey. Yeah, it, it, it's around here somewhere. I just, I know that, that he's got plenty, lots and lots of honey. Hmm, they seem to be getting closer and closer. Yep. Boy, it's getting real strong now. There it is. Uh-oh. I see, I see a honeycomb, and a honeycomb means that there's bees around here, and I know what bees do to me. I don't see any bees. Maybe it is safe to come up and get... Boy, look at all that honey. Mm. Hey, I'll 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 take a, a a whole bunch of this. Maybe maybe I'll take everything that you have on your shelves because my relatives really like honey, and and I'll even take the honeycomb as long as there's no bees in it. You don't have bees with your honeycomb, do no, you? No, there's no bees in our honeycomb. No. Oh, and good. We have we have more if there's not enough on the shelf there for you. We have plenty more of the of honey. Well, let's see. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, I, I think what's on the shelf will be plenty for my for my clan, my 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 group of bears that for getting together for Christmas. Okay, good, good. And I, you know, I, I smell some some other stuff here, and and it it smells not through a jar either. Do you have samples? Samples? Of yes. Yeah. Would you like to try some of the samples of our Vermont foods? Sure. Oh, so lead lead me to here. it. Oh boy, look at all of this. Have you do, do you do you like? Have you ever had horseradish jelly? Horseradish jelly? Yes. You mean horses get radishes? No, 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 no. Horseradish. It's a root. It's, it's a, a root. root. Yeah. Wait a minute. It's, it's it's kind of spicy. Horses don't have roots. No, horses no, have no, hooves. No, Bruin. This is something that's found underground. Oh, roots. roots. Okay. Right. No, I've never had horseradish. And, and it's made into a jelly. It's made right here in Dorset. Wow. Dorset, Vermont. And it's and it's really really good. You can you can sure. put some on a cracker here and try it if you like. Oh, okay. Yeah. Let me try some right, of that. Right, right over here. Yep. Oh no, boy, that's it. I'll smells good. For you. It smells good. There you go. Uh, oh, oh, oh boy, is that spicy? Is it, wow. Oh too, man, I'm it? telling you. Ooh, oh, that's good. But it's spicy. Okay, mm. well, let, let's go over here and you can get something sweet. Oh yeah, I like sweet things. Got anything with berries in it? Yes, yes. Ooh, we have berries. Some good. Uh, we have some good uh, jams here with berries in it. Here's some strawberry jam. Oh, strawberries I like, and raspberries, and blueberries, yeah. and 
Berries, berries, you know? Yes. Do you have anything with berries and fish? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. This isn't strawberry. This is plum. Plum? You, ever, you had plums? Plum? Plums. Plum? Isn't that a big grape? No, plum is a, is a fruit. Oh. It's a fruit like a, uh, well, grapes are a fruit also. But uh, here, taste it. You'll like it. Right. This is, is not spicy. And this is very good because it also has nuts in it. No, it's Ooh. not spicy. Nuts. Mm. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Yeah, I like that. Isn't that, that good? That's, that's, that's yeah, delicious. That's oh, good. I really yeah. like that. Yeah, I'll take some of those. Okay. Those are good. And do you like maples and apples? Oh, yeah, I like maples and apples. Yeah. And maple, apple, drizzle. This is very drizzle. good. Maple, apple, drizzle. Yeah. Does good. that mean it's raining? Maples and apples? That's no, what no, drizzle no. means, isn't it? Rain? Uh, well, it's, it's, it, you can Purple drizzle ruffle. it, you can drizzle it over, over your ice cream. Oh, right? boy, that's a, yeah, oh, that's wow, that's that, very mm. good, good stuff. Ooh, Oh, I really like that. That that's real good. Oh yeah. yeah, I like that. Boy, look at all the stuff you have here. You know, maybe I'll take a couple of jars of that that rain stuff. That that that. Uh, what did you call it? Drip, drip, drip. Apple, maple apple drizzle. Maple apple drizzle. I have yeah. some of that. It's very good. Now you don't have anything that has has uh, fish in it, do you? Or nuts and honey or. Any like candy bars or anything, do you? Oh, uh, uh, no, I don't have anything with uh, nuts and honey in it in the candy bar. Uh, hmm. You know, maybe, I, maybe you should get some because I bet those would go over real well, especially if you've got a lot of bears here. Uh, you know, I might try to make that. You know, we do have a lot of other kinds of candy bars over there that uh, are, may, are named after. Uh, people who uh, like certain things in their candy bars. Or maybe I can make one and name it the Bruin Bar. Oh, wait a minute. You make candy bars? Yes. Oh, yes. Oh. Our, our candy bars are over there. Well, let's go over and take a look at them. Oh, so these are the candy bars that you make? You actually make these candy bars? Oh, yes. We make them right over here. This I bet you'd like this one here. It's called the Monty Bar. It's got peanut butter and peanuts and... Ooh. Yeah. And caramel in it, and it's all covered in chocolate. I bet you'd like that one. Caramel and peanut butter and chocolate. Oh, yeah. And yeah. any honey in there? You said there's no, honey? No, no honey. No, no, no. Afraid not. I'm, I'm going to have to work on that and make one uh, well, with some honey. Yeah. I'll tell you, tell you what bears like. Maybe you can you can play around with, with that in your recipe. Bears like, they like honey. They like uh, nuts, all sorts of nuts. Uh, of course, chocolate. And, and fish. You ever try to put fish in with it? Oh, I don't know if, uh, how, no, a fish no. would, how a fish would taste in a chocolate bar. But, Ooh, uh, tastes pretty good, I think. But well, I, can, um, I can try anything. You like strawberries? Oh, I like all sorts of berries, yeah. Okay. And, and uh, any kind of, let's see, any kind of nuts would work fine, too. They would do pretty good. What's your favorite kind of nut? Uh, I happen to like all of them. Uh, Beech nuts. I, I can sit in a beech nut tree and eat beech nuts all day long. Oh, okay. Well, then maybe you can help me find some beech nuts because I have a little trouble finding them. Okay. Well, if I bring in the beech nuts, can you coat them in, in honey and chocolate? And you know what else would probably be pretty good? How about maybe some raisins? Oh, that sounds good. Yeah. Yeah, that would well, work. I'd give it a try. And, and maybe if I bring in a trout or two, you can put that in there and try it anyway. No. Don't yeah, think of, don't we'll, think of fish we'll see. Fish, we'll fish and chocolate don't go too good together. We'll see. I, I just think this is amazing that you can make all these candy bars to a special order. So you're gonna you're gonna work on that special order candy bar? I definitely will. I'm gonna try and uh, uh, maybe by the next time you come and see me, uh, or maybe for next year when you come your, do your Christmas shopping again, I might have something for you. Well, well, good. Well, well I'm I'm gonna go and, and back out to the woods for a few. For all about an hour or so, and then I'll come back and you'll have everything all packaged up for me. I'll have it all gift wrapped and ready to go for you. Well, I sure am glad I found this place because it you it filled up my. Uh, I don't have to do very much more Christmas shopping. Well, uh, thank you very much for shopping here. I appreciate you coming in. Well, I'm glad you're here, and and well, I'll see you later and have a have a happy holidays. And the very same to you and to all your family. Well, thank you. Oh boy. Look. Look, look, look at all that candy. Oh boy, I tell you, I'm glad I got in here. Oh boy.